Throughout my life, I have had the pleasure of fishing off of numerous watercraft. Tons of kayaks, pontoons, bass boats, john boats, you name it, I've pretty much fished off of it. However, today I'm really excited because I am fishing off of something that I've never fished off of before, an inflatable stand-up paddleboard. Now, I gotta give a quick shout out to the company Glide. They actually sent me this to try out. So in the next three videos, today, the next one, and then the one after that, I'm going to be doing a three video series all about fishing off of a stand-up paddleboard. Today I'm gonna pop into this thing, I'm gonna inflate it, I'm gonna just test it out, and then I'm just gonna fish off of it a little bit. In the next video, I'll probably spend a little bit more time fishing off of it. And then the third and final video, I'm going to fish off of it. And then I'm really going to share my thoughts on what it's like to actually fish off of one of these boards right here. I'm really excited. I've like fallen in love with paddle boards. I think they're really, really fun. Um, I've only been on some plastic cheap paddle boards, but I've never really fished off of them for a long period of time. I don't really know what to expect, but I know it's gonna be fun. So I'm excited to tear into this thing and see what we can do. I probably should be careful with this though because I do not want to pop my paddleboard. Let's get started. Okay. There's a seat you can actually strap down so you can almost use it like a kayak. I think one of the coolest things is this bag. So it's a roller duffel, but it's actually like a backpack. So you can wear this just like you would like a hiking backpack. And you could probably go into like some remote waterways just throwing it on your back and then inflating it once you get to the place you want to go, which I think is super cool, obviously. This is important. This is the, uh, it's a little thin, kind of rudder looking thing. Three piece paddle. Ugh. I don't know what to do now. <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm not a big instructions guy. I kind of just like to see all the pieces and then just try to figure it out. I should probably read the instructions, but I really don't want to. The fact that you could put all of this in this roller duffel bag that actually has backpack, you know, straps, that's one of the coolest things to me. I really, really like this. All right, so thank you, Ty. So there it is. I mean, obviously it's deflated at this time. You can see where you can put the rod holders. On the side of the box, there's a QR code, which you can scan and get the instructions. I think that's kind of cool that they do that. Because obviously when you order this, you get this exact box. You're gonna get the exact same thing that I just opened. Um, and the fact that they put that on the outside of the box makes it just a little bit easier for you. Otherwise, you can obviously access that at their website. I'm told that you want to tighten down the valve. This orange tube came open in the box, but it's just got a little uh, wrench in it, which is used to tighten down the valve. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Just make sure that this thing holds air well. This says it's a repair kit, so it's actually got some like stuff to patch it with in here too. So that's good to know. And that's cool, they put it in this little safety orange tube, so that way if you brought it with you, obviously this floats. You could latch it to the uh, paddle board, and that way if you're on the water and you have some issues, you could repair it right there on the spot, I suppose. I have never patched like waders, I've never patched a paddle board, I've never done any of that. So hopefully I never have to, but uh, I guess I would probably just use YouTube if I had to do something like that. One of the biggest things I'm curious about is how long does it take to pump up? So I think that's gonna be one of the biggest like convenience factors. If you can pump it up quick, that's a nice thing. Maximum 25 PSI, recommended pressure 15 PSI. And then you got this and it clearly you kind of push it in and then you're able to lock it around those little arms. There's two modes. So like to start, it pumps as you pull it up and as you push it down. Now that it's getting harder, I'm going to remove this and it won't pump as I come up, but it will when I go down. We were only at like nine or 10 PSI. The fact that I have to actually go to 14 is kind of terrifying because this thing is like rock solid right now. So I guess we... <laughs> if I went to add a hat on my hair, it would whoosh. <laughs> okay, well this thing is, this thing's awesome. Okay, now, real test. Oh my gosh, a fishing vessel that is so light. Amazing. There we go. Okay, now I'm just gonna scoot it forward. There we go, I figured it out. Now just line that up. Okay, the fin installation is not too hard. Okay. Could have gone smoother. Just gotta get my sea legs a little bit. Yeah, I'm not gonna use the lead. 
I'm not a leash guy. Okay, sweet. We're off to the races. It takes a few seconds to get used to, but it's stable, it's comfortable. You can tell it's lightweight. I don't have the seat properly installed. It's kind of goofy right now. I'll have to kind of play around with that for sure. But I'm just gonna go ahead and just kind of sit down like this, put my feet in the water. I've just got one ultralight with me and it's actually got a little micro drop shot on there. Um, it's got the little donkey tail junior on there and a little eighth ounce drop shot weight. And we're just gonna kind of toss this around. Today's focus is not necessarily catching a bunch of fish. I'd like to catch a few, but I'm not that worried about it. It's very comfortable to just sit on, not gonna lie. As far as the rigging side of things goes, that's gonna be the part that I'm just gonna need to figure out over time. I definitely think I'll sit on a cooler instead of the seat. I just think I'll like that a little bit better, being able to sit up a little higher. I'm getting a little short strikes. Oh my gosh, I actually caught him. Did I just catch him? Oh my gosh. Well, of course, my first ever fish out of this paddleboard is like a tiny, tiny, tiny bass. You know, it really wouldn't be a video of mine if I didn't catch a fish this size. And to break in the new board, this just makes sense. I mean, honestly, this is literally like a four inch largemouth bass, so that's cool. We have uh, broken the new board, wonderful. There's a fish. I just let that drop shot sit down there. I was clearing a little bit of a line twist and nice little bluegill, cool. All right, two species off the new rig. So far, so good. Little baby bluegill, see you buddy. Oh, got pounded. There he is. There we go. I don't think this is very big. I think my drag is a little loose. There you go. Another bluegill. He's fighting hard. Sweet. Another little bluegill there. Pretty small. But another fish. There you go. Pretty little bluegill. See you, buddy. I know probably one of the main things people are thinking about when they see an inflatable watercraft when it comes to fishing is they're probably thinking, well, well aren't you gonna poke a hole in it with your uh, hooks? I really don't think I'm that concerned about that. This thing feels pretty dang sturdy and it feels pretty darn tough. So I don't necessarily think, you know, a little bit of a hook poking it from time to time is going to you know, explode it by any means. I think you obviously need to be cautious. You need to be careful, but I'm not necessarily concerned with that. This thing tracks pretty straight, I gotta say. It's tracking really well. Easy to paddle, pretty fast. You know, I think the one thing that would be concerning with this is obviously like wind. You know, it's really light, it sits up pretty high. You know, you're gonna get blown around a little bit if you have wind, but I think that's the case with, you know, kayaks too. So, all in all, I dig it. There's one, that feels like a better fish. Yeah, a little bass, a little ultralight bass. I'll take that. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Oh, he's trying to go under me. Oh, baby. See, this is where it gets fun right here. This is fun. Not a big fish, but for ultralight, it's a great fish. All right, buddy, there you are. Good, good, good. A little more respectable. Take a fish like that. All right, buddy, thanks for the fight. See you later. Now I'm just kind of kneeling and it's relatively comfortable actually. Um, I wouldn't be able to do this for a super long period of time because I'm an old man, but at the same time, you have lots of different ways of sitting on this thing. Oh, I just got smoked. Eat it. Oh, he's a little bluegill. Come on, come on. Oh, I got him. That's a tiny fish. Let's see if he's still hooked. Oh, I don't think he is. Daggummit, I had him for a second there. Oh yeah, there's another one. Another little bass. Another little bass, about like that last one actually. Oh my gosh. <laughs> These fish are kind of crazy right now, man. A little feisty. All right. These are good little fish for ultralight. Perfect little fighters. Man, that one's kind of fat, healthy fish. I like it. See you, buddy.
So like I said, this is gonna be a three video series. This is the first video. The next one, I think I actually might try to bass fish off this thing because I think that'll be a really good test of the stability is actually setting the hook on like a Texas rig or a jig or something. And then in the third and final video, my plan will be to really wrap it all up and just kind of talk about my perceived pros and cons, some of the things I like, don't like, that sort of thing. And really just to kind of my goal with that third video is to determine whether this could be a good fishing platform for you. I think what's super, super nice about this, I mean, that's obvious is the portability. I mean, the portability is unlike any other fishing platform that you can find. Oh, there's one. Oh my gosh. Well, finally caught one standing up, but it's an absolute micro, just like my first bass. Honestly, just impressive. Don't even know how this fish got this his mouth around this tiny hook. That's just straight up impressive. I mean, come on. There you go. There's another dank. Oh my gosh. Two in a row. Two in a row. Absolute micro. That's the third one. That one's probably the smallest one yet. Respect. I kind of enjoy the fact that I can kneel on it. I can sit on it. I can stand on it. Because it's just a big open deck, you can kind of fish off of it numerous ways, which you can't really do that in a kayak. Because in the kayak, you know, you've got limited space. You know, even if you have a big open kayak, you still have limited space to stand and move around. This gives you a lot of ability to stretch out and move around, which is kind of a nice thing. I mean, for me, I've got long legs. I get tired of sitting all day. So the fact that I'm constantly moving around in this thing is kind of fun. So far, so good. That's all I have to say about that board right there. Had a lot of fun out there. Short little fishing trip, caught some fish, broke it in, got a feel for it. Very convenient, didn't take very long to set up. All in all, I like this thing so far. Make sure to stay tuned for parts two and three. Like I said, this is going to be a three video series. So we'll catch you next time.